Transition. Let's get to the. Uh, it's gonna be. This gonna be very controversial. Top ten NBA players. Here we go. So I want to <laughs> make sure that there's no confusion. For me, I'm basing it off the 2023-2024 NBA season. I'm not gonna give a definitive. Top my definitive top ten players. I'm just going off of the 2023, 2024 NBA season. Probably months from now, I'll give you a definitive top ten. But for right now, I want to do that. Be- I want to do this because I'm still conflicted on how I want to rank everybody. So that that's my that's the way I'm going to grade. So it was it. like a rough draft. <laughs> Hell, rough draft. <laughs> Pretty much how we how we do the quarterbacks in the NFL. We we base it off just past season and not just in general off of like right. just resume and accolades and everything like that. With you, I don't, how how are you gonna do yours? I'm gonna stick to the, the past season. Okay, so pretty much like how I'm doing. Yeah. It. Okay, so here we go. I'll, I'll start off with mine and I'll transition it to you. Okay. So how should I do this? I think I should start off from ten. I'll start off from 10. Okay. All right. So for number 10 on my top 10 NBA players of the 2023-2024 season, I have Kevin Durant at number Mm. 10. You know, Kevin Durant at his age, if he's like 35, he still averaged over 27, shot over 50% from the field, shot 40% from three. He was very efficient. I just think there's – better players from this past season. I just think that although his numbers were great, May second team all NBA, I believe individually there are better players. Um I'm just that's just all I think. And then also his defense took a dip as well. So number nine, LeBron James. I'm gonna give LeBron James a nod. Mm. 26 a game, seven rebounds, eight assists, shot 50 plus percent from the field, 41 percent from three. Yeah. I think he was 75. He may have been 75. Matter of fact, yeah, 75 percent from the line. So a very efficient LeBron at year 21. Yeah. It's crazy. Or year 22. 21, 22. I, I, he got drafted in 03. So 21. 21. So many years. I, I can't even keep track some of the time. Year 21, age 39. He's been in the league that. than a lot of these people that have been watching the sport. It's ridiculous. He He's he's had a phenomenal season. It's just the defense, just like what Kevin Durant took a dip, I just think he had a little bit of a better year than Kevin Durant, despite the record and everything like that. I just look at individually. Him alone, I feel like just all around and the efficiency numbers, I got to give LeBron the edge okay. slightly. So, number eight on my list, DeMontis Sabonis. I know you're like, what? DeMontis Sabonis? Let me give you. Not let, even top 100. Let, let, me, let, me give you, let me give you some stats. Okay, okay. 26 triple doubles. That's, that's one more than who? Jokic? Yes. The MVP. 73 double doubles on the year. He averaged. Close to, I think it was close to 20 points per game. 19.4. 19.4, 13.7 rebounds, 8.2 assists. I think he shot nearly 60% from the field yep. and 37% from three. Goddamn. And whenever he played Anthony Davis, what did he do? Box. He, he he played he played better than him in every yeah. single game. So I'm I'm giving Demontis Sabonis credit on that. I think he had the eighth best season by an individual player this past season. I know there's going to be a lot of people that disagree, but just going off of what I saw, going off of what he did against one of the top defensive players in the NBA as well, I got to give Demontis Sabonis a lot of credit. He stuffed the stat sheet more triple doubles than Jokic. 73 double doubles on the season. Yeah, he was hooping. Dog. I'll that, give him that. I'll give him that. Just amazing numbers. Just it amazing makes this numbers. So difficult. So many good players. 
Absolutely. Number seven. I'm going to go with Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson, the way he was able to carry that Knicks team to the playoffs, to I think they had the second seed. With all those injuries, bruh. And he shot, and he was like, I think he scored, I think he averaged like close to 28 a game. I think close to 50% from the field. Very efficient numbers for a guard. He's like six, what is he, six feet, six one? Amazing. And he was good in the playoffs. Like this dude right here, man, I, I got to give Jalen Brunson credit. I think he finished top five in MVP voting. The dude had a tremendous season. I got to give all the credit to Jalen Brunson. He was the number one option. He made all the clutch shots for the Knicks. Even when Julius Randle was down, he was still able to get the Knicks to the number two seed. This dude deserves all the credit in the world. I got to give Jalen Brunson the number seven spot. And, um, yeah, number six on my list. I went back and forth between this player and Jalen Brunson, who I want to rank over. I went with Anthony Davis at number six. Second team, all NBA, first team, all defense. He had a phenomenal defensive year. Yep. He should have been he should have been top three in defensive votes. I don't care what anybody says. But you know, for whatever he reason. He wasn't? No, he wasn't. Hmm. It was Bam, it was Rudy Gobert, and it was Victor Wembanyama. I thought I thought Anthony Davis oh, should have been the top three. True. But you know, hey, politics as usual. Offensively, he he's been tremendous. I mean, he averaged over. I think he may have averaged over like twenty five. He averaged at least. I thought it was twenty. I think it's twenty four point seven. Tw- some s- close, close enough, yeah. close to twenty five. He averaged like maybe eleven, twelve rebounds. He came back from the past two seasons where he he played seventy six games too. Something yeah, like that. man. Yeah, I got to give him credit. I he have wasn't to, he wasn't street closed this past year. Yeah, he, he, he. I think he had he had um over a block a game, over a steal a game. Played all those games. You know, the past two seasons, he's been injured. He's been playing not a lot of games, but this season he came back with with the uh, the new CBA and how you're not going to make all NBA unless you get like 65 games. He was able to play more than that, mm-hmm. and he's able to dominate on both ends of the floor. I have to give Anthony Davis credit on that. He had a good playoffs too. He went toe to toe with um, Nikola Jokic. He went toe to toe with him, like he didn't back down at all. So yeah. I have to give AD like a lot of love. 32, 32, 33, 25, and seventeen in Game Five. That was yeah. And I yeah. think, and I remember, um, I remember, I think he injured his. Uh, I forgot what yeah, he it was. did. He injured something. He injured something. It may have been a shoulder or something. In like, I think he may have been Game Four. So that, that you say, damn, he only had seventeen Game Five. I think because the shoulder was kind of bad. So I'm not gonna, you know, criticize him, him for that thing yeah. on that. So, but yeah, man, he he's had a tremendous year. I have to give him six. All right, number five on my list. I'm gonna go with Jason Tatum. Mm. <laughs> see, see, I was afraid you was gonna leave him off. The no, list. no, I'm not. I'm not gonna see. You know, I don't like the Celtics, but I gotta give Jason Tatum credit now. I think he averaged. 26, almost 27. Yeah, he averaged like 47 damn near 20, from the field. Damn near 27, eight rebounds, nearly five assists a game, shot, good efficiency. I got to give Jason Jason Tatum credit. I mean, he was the best player on the – all defense team? No, he, no, he, he didn't make it. He didn't make it. But, um, you know, man, I mean – made all NBA, though. So. Best player on a championship team, yeah. best record. Yeah. Did the thing where he led the lead team in – Points, rebounds, and assist in a series. Yeah, forty-seven percent from the field, nearly thirty-eight percent from three, eighty-three percent from the line. I mean, the dude, the dude had a good year. He had a really, really solid year. So I'm gonna give him top five. I think he finished maybe top four in MVP voting. So yeah, Jason Tatum, he's he's in my top five, well deserved. That does not mean I think he's a definitive top five player. I'm just saying, in terms of this season, I believe he was he had a top five season. Mm. That that's just my opinion. Got you. All right, let's go to number four on my list. I'm gonna go with Giannis. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, hey, I don't care what anybody says. I know, oh, the Bucks they weren't that good. They had their ups and downs, but if you look at individually, Giannis was still Giannis. He was yeah. still averaging over thirty. He was still averaging over. 10, 11, 12 rebounds. He was still the dominant force individually. So I'm I'm not going to just 
I'm not going to be like, oh, Giannis isn't good anymore. Like, no, Giannis was still dominant. It's just the team around him wasn't that good. The coaching was, wasn't that good. It was, it was very toxic. I give Giannis number four. I just think he, he, he made first team all NBA again. He played majority of this game. So I'm going to give Giannis at four. I just think he's so great that we measure him to his MVP seasons. Yeah. We measure him the year he won the championship. And it's, it's so hard when you're that great. At times, you get penalized for it. Mm. And I think this year, I feel like it's fair to put him at four. He's so dominant that we 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 um, take for granted his greatness. And I think four is fair. I know I don't I don't know where you put Giannis, but I feel I feel like four is fair, especially you know the team didn't play too well. Ain't and, no shame in top five. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I feel like it's fair. Number three on my list, I'm gonna go Luka Doncic. That's I thought you was gonna go Shea. Nah, I'm gonna go Luka on Shea this is one. Probably two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on now. It's just it's so, a given. So much decision. suspense. Yeah, I'm gonna go Luka on this one. He's obviously top three MVP voting. Carried his team to the finals. The dude mm-hmm. averaged, I think he may have led the league in scoring. He had 33 points. He he averaged damn near 34 points a game, nine rebounds, n- nearly 10 assists, <sighs> close to a triple-double, averaging damn near 34 points. My yeah. God. Enough said right there. Enough said. He's a machine. And during the playoff run, he, he was the man. Oh, OKC, okay, yeah. he was uh, up and down, but he still got his team. At the end of the day, to the NBA Finals, I don't care what anybody says, going to criticize Luka about his defense. Yeah, his defense needs some work. But that offense is too damn good. And, and he was playing hobbled. And even though his defense is not the greatest, the team the team defense overall during the regular season was pretty great once they, once they got Gafford and P.J. Washington. So even with Luka not playing great defense, the defense, the team defense was still great. Right. So they just ran into a bad matchup. Exactly. A bad matchup. He can't, he couldn't, he couldn't roam anymore. He couldn't mm-hmm. hide him anymore. You switch on to him. He's, he's pretty much over for him. So yeah. give Luca number three. So number two, I'm going to go with Shea Gilders Alexander, you know, runner up for MVP average over 30 for the past two seasons. He's averaged over 30. SGA has made a lot of people money. A lot of people money against the Mavericks series. He was the best player on the court. Yeah. Easily. easily. They had no answer for Shea. He He was was doing whatever he wanted out there. So dominant. Unfortunately, up until the end, like he just, for whatever reason, he just couldn't figure out just to make the right play at the end. But overall, he he had a great playoffs, great regular season. You could argue he should have won MVP. And. Yeah, Shea. Best Shea. record, best record in the West. Best record in the West over the Nuggets, over the Timberwolves. Yeah, Shea. Shea has had an outstanding year. You got to give him all the credit in the world. His game is it's not the flashiest, but he plays the game the right way. If you, if you like, if you like the purity of the game, you respect the purity of the game. You respect the fundamentals of the game. That's what Shea is, and you got to got to tip your hat on him. All right, number one, it's pretty obvious. It's Nikola Jokic, the MVP of the league, the guy that I believe is the best player in the world right now. I mean, I don't even, do I really have to say the you numbers? You really do Everybody, Jokic is just he a foregone. He averages gone. damn near a triple-double every year. We already know he's going to get over 50% from the field. This dude has been tremendous for the past five years. Since 2023, I believe he's been the best player. This dude right here deserves all the love. He deserves all the praise and then for just because he didn't win the finals this year, just because he lost to the Timberwolves, he still did his thing. He still showed up. Was it on the best efficiency? No, but he still put up his numbers. Yeah. So I gotta give I gotta give Nikola Jokic all the love. He's he's the number one guy. He's the number one guy on my list. And that is my top ten. Okay, I'm gonna send it off to you. Um so after Hearing some of the entries on your list, I'm changing my criteria. Oh, okay. I'm changing it from best of the 2023-2024 season to just who I think is the top 10 players in the league. Okay. So, number one, I'm going to start off. You're going to start off from one? I'm going to start off at one because I think think after the the top five, it gets a a little controversial. Okay. So, one – I'm going to go with Jokic, obviously. Mm-hmm. Two, it's not going to be Luka. 
is going to be Giannis. I like it. Because I, I, I like Luka did some phenomenal things, but Giannis, we saw the performances in the finals, and I'm going to take Giannis over the, you know what Plays I'm saying? Plays both ends. Yeah. I'm going to take Giannis. Um, three is Luka. I have Luka at three. Four, I have Embiid. Five, I have Shea. Mm, yes, oh, five, yes. Shea is oh. Shea made the top five. He's he's been like the best guard, in, the best outside of Luca. He's the best guard in the league. Mm. Honestly, I mean, over Tatum, man. Ooh, that's gonna ruffle some feathers. Hey, man. All right, hey, it's your list. It's your list. But Tatum is after uh, Shea. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Tatum, he has his flaws in the playoffs. He falters at times. But he somehow still leads the team in scoring, rebounding. The, I don't know how he does it, but he gets the job done. He ain't had a most spectacular finals when he lost the finals MVP to Jalen Brown for crying out loud. But he's still a top 10 player easily. Um, after Tatum... You might be surprised, but I'm gonna go Anthony Davis. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go Anthony Davis. Okay, I like it. He he really stepped up to the plate this past year. Played 76 games, um, averaged 24.7. Should have been top three defensive player of the year voting. Honestly, I don't know how the heck. Um, like Bam is nice, but Victor Victor Wembanyama. I mean, he did like he was nice, but the team wasn't good though. True. True, but yeah, AD was really anchoring that defense. He made a lot of defensive plays, and I was like, wow, this man, this man is a monster on defense. And his offensive production, he, he was efficient. Yeah, It was at times where I was like, I, I was like, why are the Lakers going away from AD? Mm-hmm. They, he needs to take the game. He needs to, they need to get him the ball. He needs to take, he's taking the game over. And it's like they would freeze him out in the second half. I'm like, where, what the heck happened to AD? He was cooking everybody mm-hmm. in the first half. So yeah, I'm going to go AD at seven. seven. That's seven. Yep. Eight. Eight, I'm going to go, I don't care what year it is, how old this man is. He just <laughs> he just continues to succeed yeah. and play good basketball. I'm going to go with LeBron James. Mm. LeBron James is still a top 10 guy, and I don't care what you say. There's, there's a, he's shooting better than he's ever had in his career. He's still putting up good numbers, and it's just LeBron, man. You can't, you can't, you can't do nothing about him. Father time has not yet got him just yet. Yes, I feel like he's declined on the defensive end at times, mm-hmm. but he's still top ten guy. Come on now, uh, nine. And the hard part about these things is that there's so many good players mm-hmm. in the league, but they're young. Mm-hmm. You kind of want to see a little bit more work put in. But number nine, I'm gonna put Steph. Steph at nine. Yes, I'm gonna wow. put Steph. Uh, here's why. I believe Steph Curry is still – he's easily a top three point guard in the league still. Yeah, I agree. And what he's had to work with with this Warriors team, the fact that they was even in the playoff race to begin with is great because Klay Thompson was stinking up the joint. Draymond Green was out there playing football mm-hmm. in UFC – he had to rely on Jonathan Kaminga, who just kind of got thrown into the fire, and it was and, and people. Oh, surprisingly, he's actually decent. Mm-hmm. Like and then like the then Brandon Pod Podminsky or whatever you pronounce his name. Like, come on, he's he he was a rookie, right? Yeah. yeah. No, Andrew age. Wiggins took a step back. He was hurt. Yeah. Like he had to could go through a lot, and the fact this team was even in the play-in was like obviously they lost to the Kings, but you know. I mean, Steph, he's still Steph. Like, and his stats may not have been the greatest. He averaged 24, like 5 and 5 or close to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's still Steph Curry. It's still solid. Yeah, it's 46% still Steph Curry. from the field. I mean, he, he's better than that, but 41% from three, that's still Steph yeah. level right there. Yeah. So. Especially with the volume he's been he's been taking shots. He's had to really carry that Warriors team mm-hmm. because especially his teammates was waste him in that year because good grief. Um, 10, 10, I really went back and forth at 10. It's a few players I could have put here, but, hmm. Based on merit and reputation, I think I'm going to put KD at 10. Okay. He averaged 27, very efficient basketball. Like you said, his defense took a decline, but he's still KD. He's still... 
Mr. Effic- efficiency man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you got to got to keep him at ten, at, uh, top ten still. Next year, I'm gonna give you some list of players I want to see in the top ten next year. Uh, I want to some. I, I'm not listen. I'm not against taking the old guys out. Yeah. I just need to see the the other guys really step in and really like Take move the them. I ain't about to just give it to them. Just I'm. They need to move them guys out the top ten. Top players I want to see in the top ten. I want to see Ant in the top ten. Mm-hmm. Ja. Yeah. Jalen Brunson. I look. I want to yeah. see Jalen Brunson in the top ten. Um. That might be it. Word. Devin Booker? No Devin Booker? I would like to see Book in the top ten. I mm. would. But those are like my top three or four guys. So, um, who I, I said Jalen Brunson, yep. Ja, and um, Ant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Those are the three I really want to see take that superstar mm-hmm. type title. So gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. No, that, that sounds great. I mean, they're on the bubble for me for sure. Yeah, they definitely in the top 15. I like, I like your list. I kind of had, if I would do a definitive list, that would be something similar to it. I think the KD Steph thing, I will probably switch those two. I, see, I was debating on doing that, but I'm like, I'm looking at the situation. I said, honestly, the Suns were a better situation. Right, right. Well, I mean, I mean at least you, he <laughs> had another 27 points per game score. That, that, is, that is true, but the roster yeah. and the coaching, ugh. They were they were winning off a of straight <laughs> straight talent. Yeah, true. <laughs> and Bradley Beal, uh, um, Bradley Steele. Yeah, uh, him. You will oh not my. be remembered. Did, did you? I don't know if you saw. It was like clips of him on defense. It's like on Twitter, people post. Oh, we clips knew of he him. was cheese on defense. Whoo, boy! It was it was bad. It was really really bad. And you know, we already know that the offense it, it just wasn't there this year. The efficiency numbers just wasn't there this year. And he was dealing with all types of injuries. Yeah, he stay on the court. They were just playing whoever offense. Fleece them boys. See ya. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that that whole situation. I mean, you're right. They did have Devin Booker and the supporting cast. I mean, uh, it wasn't the greatest, but he had Devin Booker, and they had some type of shooting. Like with the Warriors. I mean, what type of shooting did they really have besides maybe a couple of players? Yeah. So. You're right. I mean, I, I understand. It. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to be mad if anyone wants to swap KD and Steph. I think people are going to feel some type of way about Embiid at four because of his playoff. Oh, my goodness. Y'all need to give it a rest. Embiid is a top five player in the league. Like, please, let's not get delusional here. I know it's cool to hate hate on players and stuff and make fun of them due to their woes, but let's be real. If I put in Tatum in top six, I got to put Embiid in the top five. I, I just think... MB's dominance. Like when he's on the court, he's like the best player most like almost every night. He averaged thirty two a game against the Knicks on one bad knee. Like dude had all types of metal on his yeah. in his knee and he still Man, dropped I was is I wasn't moving and stuff. Like <laughs> come bruh, he was taking all he was on all types of drugs. Like, come on now. <laughs> and he still dropped fifty. People forgot what he was doing before he got hurt. Bro, he was Leading the league, he he was in the running for like MVP. Like he was number one at one point, and then all of a sudden injuries happened. He had to take some time off, and then you know Jokic, he came out of you know, he averaged thirty four this year, bro. If you look at the per fifty two percent shooting, t- eleven rebounds, five point. Come on, let's not be let's let's get for real here. Bro, let's be for real, bro. If you look at his averages per month, he's averaging over thirty something a game. Well, I think maybe one month he may average forty. Like this is this is who we're talking about. Like Tatum is not doing it. I get it. Tatum is winning. Tatum's constantly in the hunt for the championship, but dog, he 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 just has a better supporting cast. He's had better coaching, and when you look individually as a talent, I can't I can't name you five players better than Joel Embiid. I'm sorry, like he's just too good. He won the MVP for a reason. He's just too good. He is too talented and. You just have to give him credit. You you have to give him his respect. He's he's James Harden as a center. Like James Harden was the exact same way. Amazing offensive talent, putting up historic numbers for his position. The same with Joel Embiid. When I look at Joel Embiid, I know this this is becoming a Joel Embiid segment. When I look at Joel Embiid, outside of Jokic, he has seventy points this year too. Oh, I forgot about that. Outside of Jokic. Name me a more skilled 
center than Joel Embiid. You can't. Name me a more skilled center. There's not one. And don't give me Hakeem because Hakeem couldn't shoot threes. Hakeem didn't have the dribble package of Joel Embiid. Oh, you meant all time? Yeah. Oh. A more skilled center than Joel Embiid outside Nikola Jokic. You can't you can't name one. You can't. Don't give me a don't give me Kareem. Don't give me Hakeem. Don't give me Shaq. Shaq wasn't skilled at all. He was he was brute force. There's no other center that has the skill level of a Joel Embiid outside Nikola Jokic. And we we're just gonna you know, just like, oh, let's play off woes. Oh, he can't get it done. Oh, he hasn't been to a conference final. It's like, shut up. Why look look at the tape. Look at the games. And you can't tell me that this dude isn't one of the top five best players in the NBA right now. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 always hurt. He's we understand that. Over fifty points three times. Fifty or more three times this year. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And uh, if I if I don't recall, I remember I think and he's playing with Tobias Harris for crying out loud. If, if we got to remember, I remember this year. Uh, I think MB scored seventy. I think Luca may have scored like I think seventy something, seventy two. Yeah, something, something like not too far from. Uh, I think it may have been a couple of days or a week or so afterwards. Yeah, I remember. I think it was a weird stretch. Like Carl Anthony Towns, Carl Anthony Towns had like six. Same day, same yeah. day, he dropped like sixty something. But yeah, man, like MB, he's, he's top five. Yeah, let's let's let's, let's 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 get serious here. I think Shea, I think the Shea one is is gonna be also controversial. Like where you where you put Shea but in the yeah, conversation? Points per game, number one seed. In, I know. in a tougher conference. I know, but people think, oh, well, he he was getting his game off on everybody. He he was he was. But you it's know, just the rest of his team stunk up the joint. You know you know how people they're gonna be like, oh well, how how can you put Shea over Tatum? Easily. Tatum, Tatum, he's he's won a championship. Tatum, he also first team All NBA. Tatum, he can defend. He can he can pass. He can score. How you gonna put how you gonna put Shea over Tatum when Shea hasn't done as much as Tatum? I just did. J- Embiid hasn't done as much as Tatum either. Right, right. So I'm I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Oh, I'm okay. just I'm, I'm just not. letting you know what people are gonna try to argue because there's gonna be a lot of idiots out there. Man, let me tell you something. Y'all are taking these rankings way too personal. Listen, the discrepancy between four, I mean, between five and six is not that wide. Like, only, man, you know how these people have lost their mind. If someone told you you was a top six player at whatever you did in the entire world, only these fools would get offended by it. And, you know, here's the thing. I want want to tell you this. After three, in my opinion, any player – can move up to four. I love I love Joel Embiid, but I think any player after three, it's it's on and popping. It's up for grabs. Like, like you could shuffle it. It's like it's like a game of cards where you got the person shuffling the cards. Like anybody could move up to number four. Yeah. For after after three, anybody can move up to four. In my opinion, four or five. Like it's possible. I look at all these ten players right now. They're all superstars. They're all MVP caliber. Yeah. Every one of those players that we just named are all MVP caliber, all superstars. And after three, it's up for grabs. You can have a great year, and you can move up to four. You can you can move up to five. It, it's that close. Yeah, it's it, like it's not the margins aren't very large. It's not like I'm saying Shea is so much better than Tatum. No, I'm just saying I, I got Shea above Tatum. It's it's not 2016. 2016, it was definitive. It was like LeBron is number one. Steph is two. Steph is two. KD is three. Mm. Kawhi four. Um, five oh. is Harden. Oh, yeah. And then everybody else. They're, they're, they're Russ getting, was probably six. Yeah, Russ was six. Like, it was just, that's just how it was. Like, it was more definitive. It was mm-hmm. more, no, these are the definitive top five, top six players. And everybody else, it is what it is. Like, you'll, you might have a Paul George in there. You know, shuffle maybe maybe eight or nine or something, but that that was that was what it was. Nowadays, it's so close that you can argue for freaking Kevin Durant to be top five. You could argue for this player to be top five, and I wouldn't be mad at. It. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I understand. 
that's just how it is nowadays. Top three, I believe, is is definitive in my opinion. I, I think Giannis is two. I think Jokic is just one. I think Luka is three. But everybody else, man, don't matter who it is. Yeah. You can argue for either or. Now, if you have Tatum at three, then I'm, 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 I'm like, looking yeah, at you I sideways. I, I feel like you glazing a little bit. Yeah. But everybody else, I mean, it's up. Like number three is best. Top three is best in the world territory. Yeah, th- that's Those, that. that's what the top three is competing. They compete for best in the world. Four, th- four and up is like superstars. Yeah, four and up, four and up is like you're you're, you're superstar, your MVP caliber, but it's still like a level that you need to reach to in order to get to to the top three. Like top three is in the history. You you got LeBron, KD, Steph, LeBron, KD, Kawhi. Like those guys right there. Championships. They, yep, that's that's what that's the difference. Appearances. You got a finals appearance. Yep. Deep like, playoff runs, leading the team. That's what it's about, and yeah. All right, man. Well, I'm glad we had that discussion. I want to talk about maybe next time we do the top. I'll do it based on the season. Yeah. The previous season. I'll I'll give my definitive top ten in a later date, just not right now. Just let me be. Me.